Did you know that batteries contain something else in addition to batteries? Everyone probably thought that there was a protection board there, but in reality, this is not always the case. Sometimes there is an interesting and unusual thing. It also serves to protect batteries, but it works in a completely different way. This is a self resetting fuse. Despite its name, it has nothing in common with a conventional fuse. Let's figure out how it works and where it can be used. The fuse is covered with dielectric film with markings. If you remove it, you can see what it looks like. If you have never encountered such things, then in life you will never guess what function this thing performs. The fuse is the plate that is located in the middle. And the bends are made of nickel tape. From the side you can clearly see that there is a black layer inside. Let's try to ring the fuse and understand what it is. For more accurate measurements, I will first short circuit the probes and look at their resistance. The multimeter reads about 1.5 ohms. Now the resistance of the fuse. And here it's exactly the same. Even if you swap the probes, the resistance remains the same. The current flows equally in both directions. This suggests that there are no anodes or cathodes here. If you poke at the fuse with a needle, you can understand how it works. The two halves on which the nickel tapes are soldered look like foil. And between them there is a thick layer of dark material. This is due to the fact that the material from which such fuses are made contains carbon. More precisely, carbon is mixed with the polymer from which the fuse is made. Polymer does not conduct current, but carbon, as we know, is an excellent conductor. When a large current flows through the fuse, the polymer heats up and expands. The carbon moves with the polymer and the conductive chains are lost. As a result, the resistance of the fuse increases. After the fuse cools down, it begins to conduct current again as before. Now let's do a little experiment. Let's see what happens to the fuse if a short circuit occurs. This multimeter will indicate the applied voltage. Its probes will be located parallel to the fuse. Now at idle the power supply voltage is 10 volts. This multimeter will show the current passing through the fuse. An electronic thermometer will indicate the temperature of the fuse. Its thermal sensor is glued with tape. I set the current of the power supply to a minimum. So when I now connect the circuit, the voltage will drop and the current will only be about 100 milliamps. In fact, it turns out that there is now a short circuit. The current is now exactly the same as what I set on the power supply. While the fuse works as a normal conductor, the voltage drop across the fuse is zero volts. The thermal power generated by it is very small. I will gradually increase the current on the power supply. In order not to delay the video further, I will increase the speed. The current is 1 ampere, the fuse is still working. The voltage drop across it increased 150 millivolts. The result was a small heating element. Please note that the temperature is gradually increasing. I'll increase the current even more. Two amps. The fuse voltage is 280 millivolts. This is almost half a watt of heat. I increase it further. 3 amperes. The tension stood still at first, but then began to grow. Please note that the current stays the same. This suggests that at some point the resistance of the fuse began to increase. Then it was as if the circuit had broken. But in fact, this is not a complete break. Since current is still flowing through the circuit now, only 120 milliamps. Temperatures are still rising and much faster than before. I kept the circuit in this state for about half an hour. 
The fuse reached a temperature of approximately 64 degrees and it did not rise further. In the next experiment, I want to see how quickly the short circuit protection will respond if the fuse is cold. The power supply voltage will also be 10 volts, and I set the current to the maximum, 5 amps. Now I'll just short the probes and the ammeter will show this current. I connect the fuse. According to my calculations, the protection worked in 4 seconds. The fuse has warmed up again, but unfortunately the thermometer does not show this. There is a very large inertia in his measurements. It cannot immediately display the desired temperature, since the temperature sensor must still warm up. Let's look at the datasheet for this fuse and try to understand its main characteristics. I'm interested in this table. When choosing such fuses, you need to rely on several characteristics. Hold. The maximum current that the fuse can pass through itself in operating mode. Trip is the minimum current at which the fuse becomes non-conducting. Operating voltage and power that the fuse can dissipate. The first column shows the usual room temperature of 20 degrees. At this temperature, the continuous operating current will be 1.75 amperes. Most likely the fuse markings are taken from these numbers. Next are the parameters at a temperature of 0 degrees. Operating current 2 amperes, tripping 4.4 amperes. Presumably at this temperature the fuse can work at 3 amperes. But at such a high current it will start to heat up and over time it will turn off anyway. Further, as indicated earlier, at a temperature of 20 degrees, the operating current is 1.75 amperes, and the response is 3.8 amperes. At 60 degrees the operating current is 1.2 amps and the shutdown current is 2.7 amps. As you have already noticed, as the temperature increases, the operating current and cutoff current begin to decrease. At 85 degrees, the operating current drops completely to 0.9 ampere. Below is the time after which the cutoff occurs. At a temperature of 20 degrees and a current of 8.75 amps, shutdown will occur in approximately 5 seconds. It seems that this is not much, but in fact, if the device where this fuse is installed does not have any protection against overload or short circuit, then during this time it may already burn out. This shows the resistance of the fuse in normal mode at a temperature of 20 degrees. And here is his resistance after he turned off and turned on again. Only these measurements were not made immediately, but after an hour. Even after such a period of time, its resistance may be greater. Since it does not decrease immediately. In this case, the fuse will work, but its resistance will be slightly higher. The last column shows the maximum power output of the fuse. It is only 1.5 watts. The maximum voltage for which this fuse is designed is 15 volts. It turns out that about 100 milliamps should pass through it. The operating voltage plays a very important role when choosing a fuse for a device. See for yourself. The voltage of the entire battery where this fuse was located is 8 volts. And it doesn't matter at all where it is located, either between the batteries or at the output of this battery. As long as there is some kind of connected load, the voltage drop across the fuse is very small. But when a short circuit occurs, all the battery voltage will be applied to the fuse. The higher the voltage, the higher the current and the greater the generated thermal power. In this case, the fuse will simply bake and burn out. You can apply more voltage to the fuse, but not for long. For example, I applied 30 volts to this one, but only for 5 seconds. In this case, it heated up very quickly, but remained intact. In general, a self-resetting fuse is a great thing, but you need to choose it wisely. At minus 10, it will hold more current than you expected and the protection may not work. And at plus 30, on the contrary, 
the device will turn off earlier than necessary and will not work as expected. Therefore, they can only be used in cases where the temperature will be constant. Also, its operation can be affected by other parts located nearby. Heat released from a transistor or diode assembly can easily change the fuse parameters. And if the fuse is in SMD design, then its housing can easily be heated by the board. Conversely, if the board is very cold, it will also cool the fuse. In this case, all your estimated device parameters can easily change. Also, don't forget that a self-resetting fuse is far from immortal. If it shuts down frequently or if it gets too hot, the fuse may stop working. The number of its triggers is usually from 100 to 200. But you need to understand that this is still a protection that works in emergency situations. If it operates even twice a month, its resource will last for several years. Self-resetting fuses come in different shapes and sizes. There are high voltage, low voltage, designed for high current and small. Therefore, they can be used in many areas. They protect many devices from overload and short circuits. Just such a function is assigned to them in USB ports of computers. For many people, such things are still exotic. Therefore, if you have experience using them in any equipment, then write about it in the comments, I think many will be very interested.